Robert? Yes. What's the agenda for today? All right. So you've got this theme this week with um, change your habits, change your life. So uh, there's marketing is comprised of habits. Literally the entire thing is habits. So um, I wanted to go over and have you uh, discuss these habits as well. Okay. Well, you know, I love this time of year because it gives me, it's a good chuckle. Everybody's going to start pushing their bullshit out at us. So business plans. Oh my God. Hey, Kathy, the answer to everything in your life, Kathy, is a business plan. No, no. Or picture boards. Has anybody ever created a picture board? Okay, I granted that this is fun to do. Have the girls over. Let's get, cut out pictures out of a magazine of the yachts and the airplanes and the vacations we want to take. I get it. Everybody's going to start pushing this crap. Okay, uh, your big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, Rob, Yes. The only problem in your life, Rob, is you don't have a driving, compelling reason why. Your big why. If you just had a big why, you would spring out of bed every day with energy and gusto and take over the world. People that do that, Rob, they just have a big driving why, and they keep it in front of them all the time. Folks, okay. have, have we not learned by now that this is all a bunch of crap? If this actually worked, wouldn't we all be and have everything we want in our lives already? Haven't we already been through this before? Didn't we do this last year? And we did goal setting and business planning and picture boarding and my big why and my big hairy audacious goal. And here I am a year later and not much has changed. Everywhere I go, there I am. And the reason why is because that stuff doesn't work. If it worked, it would work, but it doesn't. It works temporarily. This is why the gyms will be full in early January. And by the 1st of February, they're right back to where they were before. Because I was excited for a short period of time, but it's impossible to maintain that over a long period. And diets work the same way. Hey, how many, we should do a poll one day. Rob, let's do this, maybe towards the end of the year. And among all of us on the Zoom right now, let's try to figure out how many different kind of diet programs we've all been on in our lives. Okay. Right? I remember when I was in high school, my parents were on this cabbage soup diet. You ever heard of that? That's nasty. Oh my God, the whole house stunk. All you could eat three times a day, that's all you could eat was cabbage soup. Oh, now, wow. Shockingly, it does work. Who would have thought that if you ate boiled water with cabbage in it, and that's all you ate for a long period of time, you would lose weight. Of course you would lose weight. That's, if you could just make up anything like that. Uh, the whole house stunk. I, if I smell cabbage right now, to this day, I get sick of my stomach. It was horrible. But guess what? Are my parents still eating cabbage soup 30 years later? No. So they did lose the weight because that's got awful horrible. And then you get sick of eating cabbage soup or whatever fad diet you're on, and you go right back to your old eating habits. So you didn't change anything. So this is why the concept of change your habits, change your life is so accurate. You want to make some changes in your life? If I wanted to lose weight, I simply need to change the way I approach food and exercise. I don't need to starve myself because I'm not going to do that for very long. I might be able to do it for today. Maybe I've got enough discipline to starve myself for a week or maybe even a month. But by next spring... I'm going to get pretty damn tired of being hungry all the time. And I'm going to go right back to my old bad eating habits. Now watch, I watch people drop off now. This is hilarious. This is how you get people to drop off a Zoom. 
because this hits too close to home for some people. They want to write a business plan and it's going to look really pretty and it's going to be eight to 10 pages. And they want to believe that this is going to be the answer to things. And then, well, it would be if you actually kept that business plan out in front of you and worked it every day, but you won't. You're going to put it in a desk drawer and that's it. It's gone. It's like you never did it in the first place. And I can make everybody, Rob, you work with me, so you can't drop off. <laughs> Let me keep going down this road and I can get Kathy and Marlene and Matt to all drop off this because <laughs> it's going to get too close. It's going to get too personal. It's going to feel too threatening. And I want to believe stuff that's not true because it's very convenient to believe it. I want to sell more homes in less time next year, Rob. I want to sell more homes in less time. How am I going to do that? Well, does it make sense that more people are going to have to know about me as a credible realtor? Yes, it does. They are. Uh, well, how am I going to do that? Well, what everybody in the industry wants you to believe is that you just buy their product, just buy their product, and uh, magic will happen. And that's what the top agents are doing. Kathy, Kathy, the top agents in Atlanta, they just know something you don't know. And if you only knew what that was, you would soar to the top too. No, that's not true. The top agents across the country, I sit in the room with these people all the time. I was one. The top agents in the country are just simply more consistent every day than everybody else is. Successful people simply do what other people are not willing to do. They get up early, they get dressed, they get to work. They don't make the narrative fit what they want to believe. They decide what it is that's actually true and that becomes the narrative. So when it comes to marketing, which is what we're talking about, commit to consistent, to a consistent ongoing campaign. What do I mean by consistent? I mean, every day. I love doing that. <laughs> every day, run your business like a business. Not when you feel like it, not when you have spurts of energy, not when you drink the extra cup of coffee. You open your business every day, five days a week at a determined time. You get to determine the time. Well, how early should it be? I, I don't know. It depends on what your goals are. The bigger your goals, the higher your ambitions, I think the earlier you're going to have to get started every day. You want to sell five houses next year? I don't think you have to get started that early to do that. You want to sell 50 houses next year? I think we're going to have to have some giddy up in our step and start every day early. Isn't this like how every other business on the planet operates? Manuela, would you unmute for a second? Play with me. Manuela, before you got into real estate, you used to own a hair salon. I did. What days every week was your hair salon open for business? Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday. What if yes. you didn't feel, today's Tuesday. What if you didn't feel like it today? Well, there would be a problem because people had appointments scheduled and um, they expected to see me or whoever they had the appointment with. So it'd be very rude and you'd crush your own business if you not show up. But you don't feel like it today or the kids are out of school yeah. or the kids are sick. The kids got your son has a cold. Oh. Um, I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. They had an appointment. They don't really care whether your son has a cold or not. This is every parent on the planet, is it not? Every parent on the planet has this dilemma and school. So schools, do they ever go to school anymore? Rob, do your kids ever go to school anymore? Yeah, they're there right now. Okay, so Rob, <laughs> you have a real job, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's say the kids were out of school today. 
Wouldn't you like to stay home and play with them? I would, but uh, they'd be sitting here in my office doing their schoolwork, homework. <laughs> but wouldn't it be better if you took them to the zoo or something? Oh, that'd be fun. Wouldn't it be great? Why don't you just yeah. do that? Yeah. No. You know what? I think you do. You can do that, Rob. All you have to do is become a real estate agent. Then you can do whatever the hell you want whenever you want to. I mean, you That's won't true. make any money, but <laughs> you can blame it on whatever you want to blame it on. Yeah, that is true. Consistency. That's what the, Kathy, the top agents don't know something that you don't know. They're just more consistent than the rest of us. Have a target audience and know your audience. If you don't know who your customer is, how are you going to generate a message that appeals to them? And don't say things like big, broad categories like first-time home buyers, unless you have millions to spend on marketing. Get very specific with your target audience, right? Watch. Stephen, I want you to unmute. Now, Stephen, I want you to watch this. Stephen, how long have you had your real estate license now? About a month. About a month. And how old are you? 24. And who is your target audience? My fraternity brothers. Big fraternity? Mm-hmm. Which one? Phi Kappa Sigma. Rob, is that the same one you were in? No, I was in Phi Kappa Phi. It all sounds the same to me. <laughs> Not the same, Stephen. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to notice something. The 24-year-old who's been licensed for 30 days knows specifically who his target audience is, who's going to buy and sell homes with them. Stephen, do you know how to speak to your fraternity brothers? Do you know what they're interested in? Yeah. Now, where did you go to school? Alabama. That first day. <laughs> Wait for this weekend. <laughs> so are your fraternity brothers all scared and desperate right now? Are they are they worried that you're gonna get embarrassed Saturday? I don't, I don't know. I think you know we can they might be out. right. Are they thinking about how maybe how we could get out of play in this game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll pull, a, we'll pull a COVID excuse. There you go. The whole team, they can't leave the state of Alabama. You're under quarantine. <laughs> That's good. That's good. We'll get a new old line while we're at it. The 24-year-old that's been in the business for a month knows specifically who his customer is. And because he does, he'll know how to speak to them. Um integrate your marketing strategy. Rob, what do you mean when, when, so Rob sent me a note and says, integrate your marketing strategy. Those are big words. Like that's the stuff. Look, look, before you answer that question, Rob, I want us all to pause for a second and see Rob's a good guy, but this statements like this, this is the bullshit that gets pushed out at you every day. Integrate your marketing strategy. Like, is your marketing strategy, Kathy, is your marketing strategy highly integrated? Well, perhaps you need to pay us $2,000 a month so we can integrate your marketing strategy for you. Don't do that. Or, Rob, demystify that statement because that's the stuff they say in business school. Okay. So, by that, I mean, you got to take advantage. You're basically all small business owners, right? You got to take advantage of every single opportunity. That's everything from email marketing with a newsletter to social media posts to continually remind everyone that you're the credible expert in that area, in the service area that you sell in. You've got to uh, use things like uh, direct mail when you have some closings and you want to do some geographic farming. If that's your thing, uh, use RSP for that. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to do everything across the board. You can't just say, I'm going to be a social media marketer and I'm just going to advertise on Facebook and Instagram and that's where my business is going to live. Why? Are, I... Because you're going to fail. Why? Because not everyone that you can sell a house to is 
living and operating and uh, living in that space. Some people aren't on Facebook. Some people aren't on Instagram. And you immediately just take a knife and carve them right off the top of the people that you can sell houses to. And that's so in sales speak, we say it like this, that we as the salespeople, we have to meet people where they're at. If you wanted to sell me something and you were trying to call me, you would never get me. Hmm. Never. I don't answer unrecognized numbers. And if you left me a voicemail message, the odds that I'm returning your call are almost zero. But I'm an email guy. If any of you, if any of you want to interact with me, my email address is Mike P at C21 Connect Realty.com. You email me, I respond to all emails the same day, usually within 30 minutes. Um, text is another likely way to get me to respond. Uh, Facebook Messenger, I'd respond to that. I've got two messages in my, see, I know how many I have. In my Facebook Messenger app, I've got two messages. How do I know how many messages I have? Because these damn red icons show up on my phone and it, I hate that. I want them to go away. That's just me. Some of you might be going, I like talking on the phone. Well, good for you. I hate talking on the phone. If you want to sell me something, you better meet me where I am. And here's the problem. We're mass communicating with a large group of people. You don't know where each individual person is. Bingo. So you need to mix up your messaging. So sometimes, yes, you use the phone. Sometimes you use email. Sometimes you use text. Sometimes you use Facebook Messenger. Sometimes you use direct mail. Use all of them and mix it up. Now, key point, when you get a customer to respond to you, make note of what medium they use to respond to you. So when I respond to you via email, your brain needs to go, Oh, Mike Pruitt is an email guy. So from now, this point going forward, I email with Mike. And this is what you use your CRM for. This is the kind of stuff. This is where you can get highly effective. Mike's an email guy. I don't need to call him anymore. Now I email with him. And little by little, you start building stronger connections with people because you're meeting them where they're at. You're communicating with the customer the way they prefer to be communicated with. Does that make sense? I'm gonna assume it does, unless you tell me it doesn't. That's what stay we mean by integrate. <laughs> stay true to your brand. Right, Rob, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one if you don't mind, cause like I did have that extra cup of coffee, but I'm passionate about this one. Folks, would you cut this stuff out of coming up with your own logo and your own little tagline, like Mike Pruitt, a household name? You know, I know that when we do that, we think it's very clever and it's going to resonate with people and consumers just think we're a bunch of dumbasses when we do stuff like that. It doesn't make any sense to them at all. I'm going to say something that you're going to think is blasphemous. You can't brand yourself. You can't. People that are telling you to do that are trying to make money off of you, or they're really stupid. It's one or the other. Sometimes they're trying to make money off of you, and they're really stupid. It could be both. I'm having some fun this morning. But you can't brand yourself. Coca-Cola can brand themselves. Procter & Gamble can brand their products, Kleenex, uh, Adidas, Nike, McDonald's, but they have billions to work with. Century 21 is the oldest real estate franchise in the residential industry. It's a worldwide thing with 8,000 offices and 150,000 agents across the world. Yeah, they have the resources to brand it. And when you're with a recognizable brand, if you're not, you got a problem. But if you're with a recognizable brand, use that. And when I give, when I wear a shirt that has Century 21 on my shirt, do you think that people, well, look at Rob. Rob, 
how many people think that you just went to like the Goodwill store and got that sweater and you just wear it? Is that what they think? Or do they think that might be where you work? I'm going to go with the latter. And how many people, Rob, when you've worn that sweater, come up to you and go, now, what, you work there? What is it? What do y'all do? <laughs> Not a one, ever. <laughs> no, they know what you do. You don't have to tell them. Yep. Stay true to your brand. You don't have a brand. Now, I want to I want to add this little caveat to this. If you don't believe this, then you can just log off now because you and I aren't going to ever agree on what time it is. You're, we're not going to agree on anything, whether it's daytime or nighttime. Now, we agree on nothing if we don't agree on this. Yeah. People just want to do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. Your customers don't give a damn what real estate company you work for. You care, hopefully, if you're with us, I really hope you do. Uh, you should care what brokerage you're with. Your customers don't. I get that. Now, look, I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, Rob, I'm going to get another nasty email from corporate this week saying, would you please quit telling people that what company they're with doesn't matter? What company you're with doesn't matter to your customers. To you, it can be vitally important. To your customers, they don't care. They're doing business with you. Manuela, they're doing business with you. Right. Stay true to your brand. Build relationships, not sales. I want you to join me in this group chuckle this week. I want you when you're on Facebook and Instagram, I want you when you're scrolling through it, right? I want you to count the number of real estate agents that are bragging. Just make like a little, keep a little piece of paper next to you and just slash. And here's what they think. This is the reason they're doing it. They're really not doing it. I choose to believe this. I don't know whether it's true or not. They don't, they're not bragging or flaunting because their egos. I mean, it is, but it's not why they're doing it. They're doing it because they believe that they're building credibility with people. And that's what people want to hire. They want to hire a credible real estate agent. No, they don't. If they did, watch it. Don't answer this out loud. But how many dumbass real estate agents that you don't understand how they can get their socks to match every day, do you watch closed transactions? Have you ever been in a closing and the agent across the table from you, you're actually sitting there going, I honestly don't know how you even got yourself to this building today. We're all shaking his head. Yeah. You're all, you've had that experience. Like, and, and does it not creep into your brain? These customers hired you. 43,000 real estate agents in Metro Atlanta, and they hired you. And I don't think you can get your socks to match every day. They didn't hire them because they were the most credible. They hired them because they liked them. It's their, their friend. They have some kind of relationship with them. So the next note I have in front of me is build relationships, not sales. Hey, look, I want you to be competent. I do. You need to have some core competency so that you don't malpractice on people. That's important. But it's not why people are going to hire you. They're going to hire you because they know you. They like you and they trust you. Now that they know you and they don't like you, well, you lost that game. So you can't be a jerk, but people aren't going to hire you, Worrell, because they think you're the smartest real estate agent that they know. They're going to hire you because they think you're the nicest real estate agent that they know. So build relationships. Don't worry about the salesy stuff. And don't brag and flaunt. People aren't going to hire you because of your trophies or where you rank in your office or any of that crap. That stuff that people are pushing out at you, it's not true. Always follow up. If you want to sell more homes in less time next year, then you have to convince me that you have the most robust follow-up campaign of anybody in the Atlanta real estate market. If you don't, then you are perpetually going to be trying to generate new business every day. 
And I'm going to say, but what about the people you talked to last week? Well, that was last week and they weren't ready to do anything. Hey, this is big ticket sales. You're not going to talk to, well, you are not going to talk to somebody today and then be ready to buy or sell a house today. We're not selling candy bars at the checkout line. Okay. We're not selling Girl Scout cookies. They don't transact with us that quickly. NAR released a survey a couple of years ago, said the average amount of time that a home buyer spends from the morning they wake up and start contemplating buying a house until the day they close on the house, 405 days. Now, who wants to work with a home buyer for 405 days? <laughs> well, then go get another job because you didn't buy your home like that. Nope. Did anybody on this Zoom actually wake up one morning and say, I think it's time to buy a new house and went out that day and bought the house? Rob, you live in a beautiful house in Roswell with your wife and two kids. Yeah. Is, can you remember back to when you bought that house? Yeah, 10, uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Okay. Now I have no idea what he's about to say. We've never talked about this, but I think Rob's a pretty typical consumer 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. How did you, what was the process you went through to find that house? Is that the only house you looked at? God, no, we were drugged to about 20 different houses. And when you saw the house you're in right now, you bought it right then on the spot. <laughs> no, it was the 20th of the, or 21st or whatever it was of, of the group. Um, and we liked it immediately more than any of the others, mm -hmm. but we, you know, we said, we're going to go home and we're going to talk about it. We're going to look at the pictures and we're going to, you know, see if it fits our needs and we'll catch up within a few days. Right. But he'd already looked at a couple dozen other houses yep. over an extended period of time. Right. Weeks. Manuela, unmute with me for a second. Manuela, you're married. Your husband's name is Mike. Yes. How long did you and Mike date before you guys got married? Nine months. Nine months. Yes. Not, not one day? No, but I pretty much knew after one day that um, he was the one. Oh, bullshit. That's the kind of stuff. <laughs> you read that in a romance novel somewhere. Nobody's. <laughs> Although I would say the last date I ever went on was the day before I met my wife. And then there you go. I was thinking about this a week ago. I was like, I rest my case. That was the last date I ever went on was the <laughs> night I met her. And then I never went out with anybody else ever again. But we didn't get married that week. Right. <laughs> Right. This is big ticket sales, but this is going to take a while. And because it's going to take a while with everybody. And look, look, I am you. I fully get it. You have bills to pay. You have mortgage payment and rent, groceries, electricity, gasoline. You've got lots of bills to pay. I fully get it. And you've got bills to pay right now. And I don't care. Because you aren't going to do anything that's going to generate business for you by the end of December. If you want closings now, you need to tell me what you were doing four to six months ago. And until you change that four to six months from now, next spring, you're going to be bitching and moaning just like you are today. Until we change our habits, our life never changes. We just keep getting right back in the same position and we keep wanting to get out of it. And I keep saying, that's good. Just change your habits every day. But that's really hard. Of course, it's really hard. But these habits that you have, what time you get up, what time you go to bed, what you eat, what you drink, what you do during the day, are they working great for you right now? Well, if they're not, if you don't have everything you want in your life right now, then change them. What do you got to lose? I just want to clarify something to everybody else on here. It, when I said weeks, I didn't mean we woke up and then weeks later we decided about it. Was, we had been looking online for six to nine months before we ever contacted a realtor to start 
seeing houses. So yes. And statistically, that's you're actually a very short timeline customer. You should take twice that long. The average is twice that long. And think about this, if that's a little shocking to you, by definition, the average means half the people took longer than 405 days. Exactly. And we get yeah. so frustrated with them because I need closings now. I got bills to pay. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Rob and his wife don't care about the bills I have to pay. And they're not going to be rushed into buying a home. That's not going to happen. Okay. The last item on here, because we're all out of time, uh, is a good one. Ask for help. Hey, folks, you're not supposed to know how to do a lot of this stuff. It wasn't covered in your pre-licensed classes. You're not supposed to know. I got a 30-some year head start on you. So if it looks like I know and you feel like, well, he knows, so I should know. No, you shouldn't know. You shouldn't. That's why, hey, look, if you did know how to do all the stuff and could come up with all the ideas yourself and you were totally self-sufficient, which so many of these bullshit brokerages are pitching. Well, we're virtual. Yeah, I know. How's that working for your agents? Like you're treating your agents like they need to, hey, Steven, tell her to go away and leave you alone. Uh, you're treating your agents as if they're totally self-sufficient. They're not. You're not supposed to know, folks. That's why Rob has a job. And if you're not going to go asking for help, hey, Steven, hey, Steven, hey, 24-year-old, pay attention. Tell them to go away and leave you alone. You're doing something. Re unmute. Unmute. Watch, we're going to have some fun here. Unmute. Steven, you can do it. Unmute. I thought I did. Okay. Repeat after me. Go away and leave me alone. Go away and leave me alone. Good. See, you can do it. Yeah. All right, everybody, let's go make it happen. <laughs>